for some information. I want to thank Mayor Walsh for being here as well. I had another uh, call today with our regional team. Uh, let's go over some information, uh, progress report on the health data, then we'll get into some restart. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost another neighbor to COVID-19. Uh, he was a Caucasian male in his 70s. I want to take a moment and think about him and his family. Uh, certainly, uh, we grieve with you as a community, as do everybody else we've lost in this process. Uh, and not just the folks that we lost to COVID-19, but anybody that we've lost, any loved one or neighbor, uh, certainly being able to grieve at this time for our loved ones is very hard when we lose them. Uh, so let's just think about them for a little bit. Related to testing, uh, we have now done 24,949 tests in Onondaga County. 24,601 tests have been returned. 1,870 have been returned since yesterday. That's 1,870 tests returned, massive number. Uh, there are now 1,614 positive cases. That's 17 new cases uh, since yesterday and we've had 22,987 negative results. Uh, Onondaga County sent out 426 tests since yesterday. We have 348 pending tests. Right now, our infection rate is at 6.6%. Uh, so we knew when we started proactive testing uh, in a way that really didn't have a lot of uh, str strategy behind it, uh, other than helping people get a uh, peace of mind that these numbers would drop from about 8% and they'll continue to drop as we do these new testing mandates. Uh, certainly uh, the virus is still here. We still have new cases. We've got to still be cognizant, uh, but the information is uh, getting stronger. Uh, we will continue to do universal testing for anyone, uh, regardless if you have symptoms or not, at the Syracuse Community Health Center this week. Uh, and again, our regional goal for testing is 775 tests on average per day uh, throughout Cayuga, Cortland, Madison, Onondaga, and Oswego counties. Uh, over our last average, uh, actually Sunday, we had 933 tests on a Sunday, uh, which is a lot of tests for a Sunday. Uh, and our seven-day average now is 1,392 for our region, uh, certainly close to doubling uh, what our goal is and mandate is. Hospitalizations, uh, we have 67 individuals in the hospital. Uh, that's one more than yesterday. Essentially uh, between nine and 10% of our active cases. Uh, we have 16 individuals who are in critical condition, uh, up one from yesterday, 2% of our active cases. Uh, let's certainly think about uh, those in critical condition. These are folks who uh, need a lot of help. So your prayers certainly welcomed. Uh, related to hospitalizations, uh, as we learn more about the, the virus and there's new regs that come up, uh, there's things that we got to work out. So right now, for example, there's 10 individuals who uh, are no longer need to be uh, hospitalized, uh, but they uh, are still in the hospital because of clearance, uh, clarification on guidance from the state related to testing an individual before they can go back to their home in a nursing home. The problem is if you're COVID positive, uh, you will still test COVID positive for a long period of time. So we're waiting on clarification. Essentially in our 67 uh, number, there are quite a few individuals that are uh, waiting to be discharged uh, or from guidance there. But until there's clear guidance, the hospitals can't release these individuals uh, back into their homes. Uh, so we've proposed a couple solutions uh, to the state uh, as we just try to iron out these wrinkles, as uh, none of us have ever done this before. Uh, looking at those who are hospitalized, uh, we have 45 Caucasian, 15 African American, six of another race, uh, one individual who has not shared any uh, demographic data. Up to date, we have had 194 people who have been in the hospital who have been released because they've gotten better. Uh, related to positive cases, uh, 1614, again up 17. That's our strongest day we've had in some period of time. Uh, we are presently monitoring 679 active cases. This is up seven from yesterday. 897 people have recovered. That's up nine from yesterday. 
Two individuals out of our 17 are household contacts of previously confirmed cases. Seven of our new cases are affiliated with senior living facilities, so it's good to see those numbers going down. Uh, and so that means we have eight community spread. Uh, very good number. Uh, we need to continue to be diligent now that we have uh, things uh, opening up. The weather's getting nicer. Uh, hopefully everybody uh, took our, our task as a county seriously on Saturday, a day of yard work. Uh, that way we could still physically distance. Uh, but again, this is something our data is getting better because of all of us collectively to, to keep it going in the right direction. We need your help. We now have 1,691 people in isolation or quarantine. Again, the rules have changed. Uh, now it, it, it used to be seven days to get out of isolation for a recovery. Now it's 10 at minimum. 14, it used to be seven days for a senior. Now it's 14 at minimum. So those numbers, the recoveries, it takes a little bit longer uh, for that to happen. So uh, our quarantine uh, and isolation numbers are a little bit uh, larger than where they would have been in the beginning part of this process. Uh, total cases, uh, 943 female, 671 male, 53 are under 19, 253 in their 20s, 195 in their 30s, 203 in their 40s, 249 in their 50s, 216 in their 60s, 177 in their 70s, 168 in their 80s, 100 in their 90s. Breakdown by age, 19% under 30, 31% under 40, 44% under 50, 59% under 60, 41% over 60 years of age. Uh, breakdown by municipality, again, uh, certainly dense buildings uh, have driven caseloads in these municipalities. 864 cases in the city of Syracuse, 383 recoveries. Town of Clay, 124, 92 recoveries. Town of Onondaga, 123, 34 recoveries. Geddes, 86, 25 recoveries. Salina, 67, 48 recoveries. Manlia, 64, 52 recoveries. DeWitt, 62, 48 recoveries. Cicero, 56, 33 recoveries. Camillus, 51, 34 recoveries. Lysander, 31, 26 recoveries. Pompey, 24, 21 recoveries. Van Buren, 22, six recoveries. Skinny Atlas, 15, 15 recoveries. Marcella, seven, four recoveries. Lafayette, five, three recoveries. Atisco, five, with five recoveries. The towns of Elbridge, Fabius, Spafford, and Tully have all had two cases and two recoveries. Uh, certainly, uh, as we move forward and we're together, uh, we need to be more diligent related to uh, physical distancing masks. Uh, let's be smart about this. This is important. Related to restart uh, on our call earlier today with our uh, regional command group, uh, 278 Onondaga County businesses have gone on the state website and attested to uh, the online portal, uh, which is needed to be done. Uh, certainly, we're very happy that construction has started uh, and uh, manufacturing and all the other uh, businesses that were on the sidelines uh, related to construction. I know I've gotten uh, questions related to uh, the Trammell Crow project in clay. Is it on? Is it off? When's construction going to get going? A reminder of this uh, project's scope and magnitude. Again, we're talking about a $350 million once in a generation investment. We're talking about uh, building costs alone of over $200 million. Uh, we're talking about a property that has produced eight, that, would, that essentially would produce eight hundred thousand dollars in taxable revenues over the next fifteen years. Uh, but related to our deal with Trammell Crow, it will produce twenty-eight million dollars for municipalities. Local labor will receive forty-seven million dollars uh, with this. A thousand jobs, minimum jobs, forty million dollars of new payroll a year, over four hundred million dollars of new payroll over ten years. When you look at all the other spin-off jobs from this uh, project, it will be uh, really remarkable. Uh, and so it's a big project. Uh, and we uh, got it going again. The construction's going again. Uh, Trammell Crow's moving on the project. And uh, certainly, uh, it's really our pleasure to announce that our tenant at the Clay Warehouse facility uh, is Amazon. 
And so we're very happy about this. You can't think restart without thinking about this once in a generation project. Uh, so uh, at this time, we have a video from our new neighbor, Amazon. Uh, this video uh, is Anand Mehta, our regional director of Amazon. So he has a message for us. Thank you, County Executive McMahon, and good afternoon. My name is Anand Mehta, and I'm proud to serve as Amazon's regional director of operations. It's not often that we get the opportunity to announce the launch of a new Amazon operations facility virtually to the community. And I'm proud to share with you today that this is just the beginning of several firsts for the community and Amazon. The Empire State and its incredible workforce has been vital to our ability to serve our customers and we are proud to continue to invest in the communities across the state. You may not know this, but Amazon is big on celebrating first. As a relatively young company, we sold our first book online almost 25 years ago, in July of 1995. In September 2018, I had the honor of launching Amazon's first fulfillment center in New York in Staten Island. And today, I am proud to announce our continued investment in New York with great jobs and a new state-of-the-art fulfillment center in Onondaga County to serve our customers across the region. This facility in Clay will be the first of its kind in upstate New York and will be our newest generation of robotics fulfillment centers. We anticipate the building will launch in time for the 2021 holiday season and will create a thousand new job for the community. Future employees will work alongside Amazon's innovative robotics technology to safely and efficiently pick, pack, and ship smaller customer orders, such as books, electronics, toys, and household goods. We will also uh, will hire roles in human resources, operation management, safety, security, finance, and information technology. Amazon jobs are great with industry leading pay of $15 and up and comprehensive benefits that start on day one, including health, vision, and dental insurance, and 401k with a 50% company match. One of the benefits that I'm most passionate about is our employees are the programs we have in place to support their training, development, and long-term career growth. At Amazon, we want to help our employees get the skills they need for today's and tomorrow's most in-demand jobs. All associates go through hours of safety training and coaching. Last year, Amazon pledged to invest more than $700 million to provide workforce development and training opportunities for more than 100,000 U.S. employees. These programs will help Amazonians from all backgrounds assess training to moving into highly skilled roles across the company's corporate offices, tech hubs, fulfillment centers, retail stores, and transportation network. That investment is in addition to our longstanding Amazon's Career Choice program, in which the company prepays up to 95% tuition for courses related to in-demand fields, regardless of whether these skills are relevant to a career at Amazon. Since the program's launch, more than 25,000 employees have pursued degrees in game design and visual communication, nursing, IT programming, radiology, just to name a few. This facility would not be possible without the support of an Onondaga County Executive McMahon, Governor Cuomo, and the other regional partners who brought the facility to life. On behalf of Amazon and more than 7,000 employees across the Empire State, thank you for welcoming us to Onondaga County. We are very proud to be a good employer and we are just as committed to be a good community partner in the locations in which we operate. We look forward to continuing to invest in the region and we are excited to be a part of the fabric of the Clay community. Thank you. So you heard from our new neighbor. So. Uh, the biggest secret in all of central New York is no longer a secret. Uh, it's a good day. Uh, related to uh, a project like this, uh, you've heard me say before, success has a thousand authors. And we have so many partners that helped put us in a position to get this uh, project done. 
our community demonstrated uh, really an amazing uh, job to uh, court a project, uh, then to bring the project here under what were certain timelines that needed to be met to secure the project. And we were able to do that by working together. So I wanted to just uh, thank some people and then bring up some of these people to uh, offer a couple remarks related to uh, what this means to them. Uh, again, uh, certainly uh, New York State, uh, Governor Cuomo, the Empire State Development team, uh, Jim Fail and Geo Holmquist uh, had a uh, you know, strong role in helping uh, work with us on the team. Our Onondaga County team, uh, Bob Petrovich, Mary Beth Primo, our OSIDA board chair is here, Pat Hogan, uh, and all of our OSIDA board members. Certainly, if you look at how quickly they got the environmental review process done, and uh, their process, uh, that all made this happen. Town of Clay, uh, uh, the Town of Clay Board, the Zoning and Planning Boards as well. Supervisor Yulatowski is here. Uh, the supervisor uh, did a fantastic job and with his uh, boards to help us meet the timelines that were necessary for us to win the project. Uh, certainly Congressman John Kako working at the federal level uh, the congressman is here. He'll say a few words momentarily. Uh, but this is an international company, one of the top tech companies in the world that do so many other things. And, and our congressman will talk about that. Uh, Mayor Ben Walsh, when you recruit a, uh, a company like this, they don't just look at where the property is going to be. Uh, they look at the region as a whole. And certainly the progress that is being made in our downtown, in the city of Syracuse, in our region uh, was there. And I want to thank the mayor for his help. And then Center State CEO Rob Simpson. Rob's been uh, working uh, with these folks for a, a period of time on and off and really helped uh, us through the process, building that rapport. And Rob, we'll, we'll hear from Rob in a minute. But at this time, uh, why don't we have Mayor Walsh is right next to me. So, Mayor, why don't you come up and say a couple words? Thank you, County Executive. Congratulations to you and your team. Uh, this is a significant accomplishment for the entire region. Think about it. Over the past year or so, J.P. Morgan Chase, Microsoft, and now Amazon, three global corporations investing here in central New York. And as much as uh, this recent crisis has impacted all of us and will continue to, uh, when people ask about our economic prospects, I think most of us feel we had turned a corner, we were on an upward trajectory as evidenced by the investment that we've seen. And while, again, the crisis has certainly slowed us down, um, I point to the individuals in this room, um, Congressman Katko, Rob Simpson, uh, IDA uh, Chairman, and more importantly, uh, Second District Counselor Pat Hogan, uh, Supervisor Ulitowski, um, all of the ingredients are still here. And so as we begin to recover and as we ensure that, that we're doing it in a, in a safe way that prioritizes health, um, those same ingredients we believe strongly are going to continue to produce great results like this. So again, I want to congratulate everyone involved and uh, we'll hear from some of the others that helped to make this exciting announcement happen. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Congressman, do you want to come on up and say a couple words? Good afternoon, everybody. And before I, I talk about why we're here, why I'm here today, I wanted to just pause for a moment and thank uh, Ben and Ryan for their superb leadership through this crisis. We're in constant contact with each other, and uh, we have a long way to go to deliver some of the things they need, uh, including uh, direct funding to, to the, the city and the county instead of a formula that it goes elsewhere and maybe trickles down to them. They need it directly, and we're working on that every day in Washington. And I want to just uh, say thank you to both of them for their superb leadership. We talk all the time, we always have, and we do it because it's the right thing to do for our community. And I think that's one of the reasons why Amazon invested so heavily in our area. They understand that the leadership here is strong and united, and we want to do the right thing. I, I want to take a step back for a second because this is a really big deal. There's not many places in the country right now that are announcing thousands of new jobs. Think about this, in the middle of a, of a crisis that's been the worst since the Great Depression, we're announcing thousands of new jobs. That's pretty amazing. And um, when I was in high school, working my way into factories to pay my way through school and, and college, um, we, since that time, there's probably been about 20,000 at least manufacturing jobs that have been lost. Those manufacturing jobs that are a step up out of poverty, 
Those are the ones that get you off of unemployment and into the workforce, and sometimes for the first time. And uh, that's why I'm so excited about this. I think it's going to have a dramatic impact on the city, a dramatic impact on the county, and a dramatic impact on the region. And I'm very, very excited for what this is going to do for this area. It's a, it's a several hundred million dollar investment, jobs at a time when we need jobs badly, good paying jobs to build a facility, and then a ton of jobs once a facility is open. And one of the things I've been working on a lot down in Washington since this became known, and it's hard for me to keep a secret, I've been excited about this for a while, is the other side of the coin. Uh, Amazon's retail services are, are gigantic, for sure. Their bigger thing is their web services. Amazon Web Services, or AWS, is a very, very, very big thing. Through my work on the Homeland Security Committee and my, my, uh, my leadership on the Cybersecurity Subcommittee, we've been talking a lot with the Amazon about trying to get them to come up here and invest at the high school level, at the junior high level, to help develop a cyber curriculum and a cyber workforce, to help them uh, uh, understand what we have here in central New York as far as talent from a university standpoint, all the great universities around here, and the overall workforce. One of the biggest problems you have with cybersecurity and cyber development web services is developing the talent and getting them into the field. Uh, they project, right now we have several hundred thousand uh, person shortage in that field, and they project to be much higher, and Amazon Web Services is very interested in helping us develop a workforce here that can get into that highly lucrative field. So this is much more than just this project. This is a sea change, and this is the biggest shot in the arm I've seen in Central New York since I've been, uh, <laughs> since I was a kid. And it's very, very good news in the midst of this pandemic. So it's a credit to Ben, and it's a credit to Ryan, and it's a credit to all these folks over here that you see. Uh, no one cares what party we're in. We all care about doing the right thing and, and advancing the ball. And uh, this is a big win in the middle of a very, very tough time. And the fact that Amazon's still willing to invest, given the economic climate, tells, says a lot about Central New York. And so with that, I'm just thrilled. I thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Congressman. Uh, Supervisor Yulitowski, you want to say a couple words? Come on up, Supervisor. They did a great job with their permitting process. Uh, part of, to win this project, we had a deadline, and, without, uh, and you had a very unique building. There's only uh, one other as big as this building throughout the, the world so, uh, in this uh, logistics space. So the Supervisor did an excellent job. Supervisor, come on up. I want to thank you, Mr. County Executive. You let the kid out of the bag, so you couldn't unmask me. <laughs> well, I first heard about this project uh, about maybe 10 months ago when I was invited to uh, the county executive office. And it was like going to the principal's office. You never know what you're going to get. But uh, when I walked out, I, I was carrying some very good news to me, news that I wanted to take to the uh, to Claytown board as something that we've all been looking for, not just in the town of Clay, but throughout our county, throughout our region, and equally so to the city. Because Clay is not nearly as big a name or recognizable a name as the city of Syracuse is. And I think this is going to give the city of Syracuse, as well as all of us, a great boost. Not just in the short term, but in the long term. Because I'm more excited, I think, about the spin-off business that this project will generate. And others will gravitate to central New York and hopefully again to the town of Clay because of the foresight that our county executive has, the buy-in from, from, our, from our mayor, the good assistance from our, our, our representative from Congress. So we have a lot to be happy about today, a lot to be joyful for. Uh, I'm very, very seriously looking forward to every step of this process along the way. And once again, I want to thank the county executive for his vision. and. Uh, to all the residents of uh, Onondaga County and the surrounding region, I think we've got a great project. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Supervisor. Rob, you want to come on up, say a couple words on behalf of uh, your efforts in the business community? Great. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, County Executive, uh, Mayor. Congratulations to our entire community. This has been uh, this has been a lot of work, and I, I have to say, from the get-go, uh, working with the partners, not only up here behind me, but for those who still have yet to speak, certainly Damian, Congressman, um, the partnership and the collaboration that has allowed this project to move forward on the pace in which it has has been astounding. I've been doing some version of economic development work in central New York now for almost 18 years. And I can remember a time when 
projects that were supposed to be kept secret weren't always kept secret, and where details uh, that were critical to moving a project forward weren't able to uh, be executed against. And in this case, on the biggest stage for Central New York, with the biggest project that we've seen in 30 or 40 years for our region, all of the team members, starting with the county executive on down, uh, rallied around this unique opportunity to bring a, more than a thousand jobs to Central New York in one fell swoop, and to be able to announce it at a point in time like today when our community is in desperate need of some good news, something to be excited about. I think the most important thing that gives me hope for the future is that, and I think the mayor referenced this, the, the conditions for our economic success prior to this pandemic uh, had Syracuse on the single biggest economic role that we've been on in 40 years. And those conditions, largely the collaborative nature of the relationships between folks, our partnership with the state and Governor Cuomo and Empire State Development, um, those conditions still exist. They give me great hope that uh, Central New York has extremely positive economic developments that will come uh, in the not too distant future. So congratulations again, County Executive, for uh, this momentous announcement. Thanks, Rob. Chairman Hogan, you want to say a couple words? My old colleague from the City Council, he's back. <laughs> couple words, Chairman. Couple words. There. Well, this just proves it's central New York. Um, doesn't matter what kind of difficulties we might have, we can unite together to get things done. I like to remind everybody that this is a, this is an American tribute, an American way of doing things. You know, a community a community that pulls together. Uh, the uh, the Empire State Building was built during the Great Depression. Um, you know, I have it's been my pleasure to work with Bob Petrovich and the economic development team, and what Brian uh, Ryan's put together has been an incredible team that's just committed to getting things done. On the City Council, I work with Mayor Walsh. I am firmly convinced that the city of Syracuse and central New York can get through any kind of crisis with the leadership we have. So I'd like to thank everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Pat Hogan, Chairman of the Osida Board. Uh, questions? We have a lot of people that can answer different questions, so uh, let's go. How, you know, obviously the pandemic kind of slowed this process down a little bit. Um, could you get, just give more specific details about how the pandemic has slowed down this whole clay warehouse project? It hasn't slowed it down as far as uh, we probably would have been together with a different type of announcement. Uh, it, the, uh, and maybe weeks, not months, uh, if, if there are certain milestones with Trammell Crow that they had to meet uh, so they could do their job to, to meet the timeline of uh, Amazon. So you had a scenario where Amazon needs to be open in September of 2021. To meet that, when you go backwards on a timeline, you have to have so many approvals uh, in order to do that. So a project this size, the amount of work that is put into it uh, is truly remarkable. And that's why you see so many people who we invited to talk today. All, all these individuals uh, played a role in, in this at one point or another. So. Uh, really, in, you know, Im impressive team victory. One that we'll do a case study on this, and we'll do a case study on this, and we'll tell this story, and we'll go to other conferences that we go to every year, and other site selector type events, and we'll show what we did, uh, and what we did was pretty special. Were there any conversations about Amazon no longer being interested after the pandemic? Was there any anxiety that that maybe this thing we just got awarded might go away? Yeah, there's anxiety for sure, uh, but uh, there was never panic. I, I, I think a couple, uh, there were important deadlines after, uh, between when we had what we needed to get done uh, for the developer and then uh, a final decision day where uh, certainly the Amazon uh, executives need to sign off on the project. So there are certain days in this process that there was anxiety, uh, but I, I don't think there was ever panic. Why the secrecy? I mean, all arrows pointed to Amazon for the last 10 months. Uh, well, the deal got signed less than a week ago. So there was no deal to announce. You, you uh, when you have, uh, until there's a tenant. Uh, now, the certainly the developer, Trammell Crow, closed on their property and started investing 
millions, tens of millions of dollars before the deal was signed, but uh, there was a lot of verbal communication, but until there was a uh, signed lease, uh, it wasn't in our position to talk about who, uh, who our new neighbor is. What day was that lease signed? I'm not sure the exact day, but it was within the last week to week and a half. Who approached who? Was it, was it the developer that came to the county in Clay? Did, did the county seek this? Yeah, so th there's different parts of the process where we had direct communication with, uh, when I became county executive in Salt Lake City, I had direct communication with the Amazon folks. Uh, I know over the years, Center State's talked to the Amazon folks. Uh, certainly, Empire State Development knows in New York State, works with Amazon throughout the whole state. So there were plenty of touch points. Uh, we got to uh, know them, and for the same reason that other people will invest here, uh, in logistics and other uh, economic clusters, Amazon invested here because of who we are and where we are and what we bring to the table. Can we talk about the location of the warehouse and why that's attractive for distribution? Yeah, well, it, it's, a, it's, it's big enough. It's got utilities. It's got infrastructure. Uh, not a lot of uh, upgrades need to be done to the, to the roads. Uh, there are some upgrades that will be done. But it, your access to the bypass there, the, the, the throughway, um, so these are all things that certainly are very favorable conditions. We're in the middle of the state, we're in the middle of the Northeast. Uh, so the ability to put something very large here uh, that can then feed into many other locations throughout the Northeast made a lot of sense. And then the workforce talent is another piece that we had to offer is we can uh, certainly will be able to fill these jobs. Uh, and these individuals, many of them will go on to have very nice careers at Amazon. But you heard Amazon, uh, you know, an end talking about the fact that they pay for college uh, scholarships uh, for their employees, and many of them uh, work at Amazon, and they go and they go do something somewhere else, uh, and Amazon pays for those benefits. Who's paying for those infrastructure improvements? The developer, or the developer slash, I don't know if Trammell Crow's getting it back in rent or whatnot, but uh, Trammell Crow's uh, paying for it. Can you talk a little bit about the tax breaks and the incentives that the company is receiving? Yeah, yeah. They again, uh, they received a 15-year pilot, uh, sales and mortgage tax recording uh, relief, uh, very uh, essentially generic type benefits uh, to give every give everybody an idea, a reminder. This was a golf course. Uh, we know how complicated golf golfing has been over the last uh, two months. Uh, and so the golf course was paying over 15 years, property taxes, town of Dyke County, the Liverpool School District, and the town of Clay, over 15 years, they would have paid us $800,000. Our new friends at Amazon uh, and Trammell Crow over that same period of time will pay us $28,708,000. So for us, besides all the benefits uh, that come with the jobs and the $40 million of new payroll that wasn't here, uh, and all the construction jobs and the uh, $48 million of local construction wages that are going to be paid, uh, we're also making money on the deal for the taxpayer, uh, and that will certainly help offset uh, you know, future costs. We've seen some concerns about the working conditions in an Amazon warehouse. Has the company made you any promises about how they treat employees? I mean, we've heard about them working long hours, getting hurt, and then not being, um, you know, taken care of after the process. Any discussion about the working conditions in this warehouse? Yeah, we're confident, uh, Andrew, that Amazon's going to be a, not a good neighbor, but a great neighbor. And so uh, there uh, certainly, there's two sides to every story. Uh, and, uh, you know, Amazon is um, calling Central New York home, uh, New York State well known for their regulations, uh, so I'm sure that uh, things will work out and uh, that uh, we will certainly be making sure that everybody lives up to their end of the bargain. Did the county or did the town of Clay get any specific assurances about salary levels or hours or any kind of workplace? Yeah, that's not uh, that, that's uh, not part of the, the pilot agreement was Donald Trammell Crow, the developer. So uh, the, what they have to meet is 1,000 FTEs to keep the benefits. Uh, so uh, that's the, they told us on their application what their wages are going to be. 
so anywhere from 35,000 up. Uh, so that's what uh, the, the IDA application has been available to everybody to look at for a long period of time. Those were the promises that were made. To the people who live in the surrounding areas, through the rezoning process, we heard their concerns about traffic and noise. I know some changes were done to the site plan. What can you tell them today now that there's a tenant about how their lives may or may not change? Now that yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to change. The issues that were addressed through the environmental review process uh, are still addressed. The, just the, the, all of that process is the exact same. All, the, all you know now is everybody knows uh, the name on the building. Uh, and certainly uh, we're excited about what that name represents, not just for these, uh, this extremely large investment, second largest logistics facility in the world, uh, but you, know, you heard the congressman talk about potential other uh, investments in web services, cyber, that uh, he's certainly well positioned to try to uh, continue to push uh, the company to look at Central New York for. Maybe you or the supervisor could just fill us in as a reminder of some of the changes that were made to address the concerns of people that live well, in Well, you, you know, there's going to be some small road improvements. Uh, certainly there were some uh, l lights that were uh, added on Morgan Road uh, that we think will address any concerns. That was one concern that uh, whether or not it will really have an impact or not. The engineers had dis disagreeing of, of opinions, but we did it anyways. So re related to that, certainly there is a very st uh, strict fire ordinance on this building, and uh, that actually cost the developer a lot more money uh, to meet the state fire ordinance there. So uh, th this thing has been vetted every which way by every governmental entity, uh, and uh, th they're ready to roll. Ryan, along this process, did you or did any of the people who worked on it, were you able to visit a similar site? And if so, can you tell us about it? I did not visit a similar site. Uh, I won't speak for anybody else, but uh, there is no other similar site, uh, Terry. Uh, this is, uh, I think, one got approved uh, in uh, may, Texas, maybe, that's starting construction. Uh, and I'm not even sure if there's another one like this. So going to a regular distribution center isn't what this is. This is a logistics robotics distribution center. So uh, the, there's one in Oklahoma City uh, that actually some of the, from a fire ordinance standpoint, uh, the, the, some of the regulators were offered to go see it from a fire standpoint, I know that. But there is nothing, there's nothing operating today like this building. Would you elaborate on that, how unique this is? I mean, it's, 3.8 million square feet of logistics, robotics, state-of-the-art facility. Uh, you know, you're talking about a $400 million investment. Uh, hasn't happened in my generation. I'm 40 years old. So uh, when you look at uh, that type of investment and you look at uh, all the spinoff jobs, well, I'm not even talking about their budget is. I don't even know what their budget's going to be to operate this. Uh, but we know that they've already talked to local businesses about packaging and things of that. So. Uh, that they're going to be spending a bunch of money here in addition to the employees and the payroll. So uh, this is a big deal, a big deal for the community. Uh, the timing, I, I think, to, the, to their credit, for them to commit uh, when they know, everybody, when they see the unemployment numbers where they are and they understand the hardship, for them to commit to this, uh, I, I think is really special. Does the drone corridor have anything to do with the location choice from Amazon? It doesn't hurt, Trish. That's something that I know uh, many people have, uh, want, want to talk about. And there's so many other businesses with Amazon. Uh, you have their web services, their cyber, Amazon Air, which is kind of what you're talking about. Uh, so there's, uh, it doesn't hurt that we have these other things we can talk about here with our higher ad power and what's been going on with the UAS. I know that you talk about the, the strict fire ordinance, and I had attended some of those meetings, and I know that there were some difficulties because it is very a very complex building. I assume all of that has been resolved and there's no mm -hmm. more complications as far as that? No, they got, uh, certainly they uh, had to make very expensive modifications to their plans that they didn't have to make uh, in other locations. So uh, again, that tells you uh, they want to be here and they want to be a neighbor. What does the neighborhood, what can happen next to the neighborhood? Do you see more residential development down the road? Do you see more commercial development to spin off that project into other projects as people decide 
clays where they want to be in order to be close to work. Yeah, I think the opportunity for uh, land development around that property is certainly that land's probably more valuable today uh, than it was before. But uh, again, when, when you look at things, uh, it's always good to have a plan and to do things strategically. Uh, you have kind of a little logistics corridor now with Raymore and Flanagan right there and then Amazon across the street. Uh, so there's other property that's owned there that maybe makes sense that way. Certainly White Pine Business Park, uh, not too far from this site, is something that uh, we've been working on to uh, put the infrastructure in place for high-tech manufacturing. So uh, I know these are things that the supervisor and our planning team have been working on. Uh, I believe we got ta uh, Clay a town planning grant as well uh, to help with some of this. But certainly the businesses in the village of Liverpool are going to do well. You're going to have at least 1,000 people that are going to be five minutes away, ten minutes away from uh, spending money there. Uh, so th there's, you know, th this is a good thing. This is going to be a regional employment draw, and it's going to bring, uh, it will employ people in our county, it will employ people in the counties around us, and it will bring that spending in and capture that spending here in our community. Can you just repeat when construction began and then when it will be completed again? Yeah, construction is starting. It has been going on for a period of time. Now it's going into high gear. Uh, and uh, the uh, project date right now is September of 2021 for this property to in this building to be ready for the 2021 uh, fulfillment season. What is something that might surprise us about your pitch to get Amazon to Central New York or the project over the last year or so? Yeah, it was. we made various pitches at different times. Uh, you know, we the, we met the, the Amazon team, uh, and and Brad on the Amazon team was fantastic. Uh, they, they they met with us. They got to know us. Trammell Crow has been working with our economic development arm and Bob Petrovich uh, on a daily basis. The developer, so but they wanted to know about who we are besides of uh, on a map. You know, I'm sure that there's a level of that where they see where we are and they want to know who they are, especially if you're going to put this type of facility here. And we were competing with other northeastern communities for this facility. Uh, you know, and so uh, for us to tell them about who we are, I know the mayor and I and Rob had dinner a couple times with these folks, and uh, they got to know us, know who they were making investments with, essentially in the community. And then they got to really understand the pitch we make. And then if we hit the timeline, which was an aggressive timeline, uh, I, I think to them that showed a level of competence because uh, those timelines are something we can control. And then our IDA board hit their timeline. The town of Clay hit their timeline. Uh, New York State hit their timeline for that fire um, permit. So uh, collectively, they, I think they felt very good about their decision because of the aggressive timeline that we were able to do our job. To the people watching who want to work for Amazon, where do they go? I, yeah, it's a good question, Andrew. I believe on their website, if you've gone to their job opportunities, uh, I, think, I think they've actually already been marketing jobs in Syracuse, New York. You might have saw Amazon commercials uh, earlier in the year. And people are looking at that as a sign that they might be here. But yeah, they're gonna, that's going to be an exciting part of this as we give updates about uh, job fairs, things of that nature. Brian, can I ask about um, something you said earlier about uh, Restart? I think you said 278 businesses in the county had gone on the state website. Can you explain a little bit more about what that means? Does that mean those businesses are open? Are they waiting for yeah. approval? So what that means, Terry, is they have, uh, they, these are the businesses that went to New York Forward, uh, went through the guidelines, attested to those guidelines, printed out the uh, the work form and, uh, and did their plan. Now we're holding on to their plan and their business. That was through Sunday. So we'll get hopefully updated information and eventually we're going to get the, who these, these businesses are. But the mayor and I got that information on our regional uh, call that we just completed. But they can open now yep. and then they're subject to perhaps an inspection or inquiry from your office? Yeah, yeah. I think certainly the, the, the people that have gone through this process are probably uh, the ones who won't be get, getting a, someone knocking on their door. It will probably be people who have not. Uh, but again, we encourage people to uh, go through that. And a reminder, even if you've been operating this whole process, 
we still need you to go and, on a New York forward and go through this process to print out uh, your, your plan in the event we get uh, complaints. We talked about this a bit on Friday, but um, as far as you know, moving through these phases and, and people social distancing, our county is the most densely populated in the region. So in your opinion, how important is it for people to continue to wear masks and social distance um, as we move through these phases? I think it's really important. And there's, uh, the weather is gonna be nicer. And I looked at the weather and there's gonna be more things now that we're opening up to really uh, try to get us closer to uh, a feeling of normal. Uh, but the reality is, is if you wear a mask, it's a mitigation technique that most doctors agree helps keep you safer than if you don't wear a mask, especially if you're gonna be within six feet of each other. So that's the rule. Uh, I get some people don't like it. And uh, I get uh, some people who have respiratory disease, asthma and stuff, it's very hard for them to do that and they, d they can't do it. Uh, but for most of us who can, uh, it makes sense to do it. Uh, when you're in a store, it's, it's appropriate. Uh, it, it makes people comfortable uh, and it, it helps protect you and your family. And then if you're going out to exercise, my suggestion would be uh, that there's a chance if you're in our parks or the Loop the Lake Trail or uh, where Pratt's Falls, that you will be within six feet of somebody for a moment in time. And that's all that takes uh, for saliva to stay in the air and a droplet to get on you. So uh, my suggestion would be, even if you don't have it on you at all times, uh, you wear it when you'll be around people within six feet. Uh, and I think by doing this, we'll continue to see the data going in the direction it is. Uh, again, our three-day three average right now for community spread is about 11, and that's the best we've, we've had uh, at any point in this process. So good numbers, uh, we're, we're doing really well. Uh, we need to continue to do well over the next week and a half here uh, going as we get really prepare for phase two. Do you have the hospitalization current date, uh, current information in front of you? I do. When you read it? Could you just give that again and... and 67 uh, hospitalizations, up one. Uh, it, 16 in critical condition. It, are those high? No. What was our maximum hospitalization? About 65, 64. This goes to my point before, Andrew. When you're the best and you're still the best, how are you bad? So it's, we were never bad. So that's why I think on that one hospitalization metric, uh, that's why I get very critical of some of the headlines uh, that happen w when you're talking about this. Is Not because my headline. No, well, I'm just saying, uh, the, uh, when, you, when you are good, and you're at 3% of your hospital capacity, or four or five or six, then you, you go from four or five or six percent to 4.2 percent or 4.3 percent, and we're acting like the sky's falling. Uh, the reality is, out of this number, there's there's 10 individuals that can't go back to their homes yet. So they count in our numbers until they can go back to their homes, uh, because under the governor's current order. Uh, that they got to test negative to go back into a nursing home. If you're positive, the reason we don't test you to get out of recovery uh, is because you're still going to test positive. So we got to work through that. But on, the mayor hears me on these calls about the grading system. The hospitalization uh, numbers, we are being unfairly uh, monitored because we never had a problem. If we had a problem and we had 200 hospitalizations, and then we went down to 100, and then the next week we're at 175, that's a problem, okay? But when you are at, uh, in, in the 40, and then we don't have any nursing home cases, and then this virus flies through these buildings like wildfire, uh, of course we're gonna have more hospitalizations. These are people who uh, are going back and forth between the hospital uh, often many times, so, uh, it, I, I'm a little bit sensitive related to how, uh, how this is being analyzed uh, because we've always done very well. Our hospital capacity is not an issue. Uh, and because we've never had an issue, uh, our numbers, if they go up a little bit, are being critiqued in a way that doesn't tell the, our whole story of where we are in this process. When you say critique, could, could, whether it's fair or not, could 
that number hurt us meeting that metric continually? No, I think everybody's learning through this. Uh, again, if that 67 turns into 120 and we don't have a story why and it's community spread driven, then you have a problem. That's going to slow things down. But if 67 turns into 70 tomorrow, but then goes down 12 the next day because these people go home and then goes back up five because we have people in nursing homes who have COVID that need to go to the hospital. This is, by now we should know this is how this thing plays out. If you're a senior and you get this, you are in a fight. If you're in a nursing home with underlying medical conditions and you get this, you are in a bigger fight and you're gonna need to go to the hospital at some point. So this isn't news, this is, we know this is gonna happen. So there's a narrative behind that. Um, if there's not a narrative and it's, we, we can't tell you why that's happening, that's a big problem. Uh, but with this, this is, uh, you've seen a, a moving of the averages as you have seen the nursing homes get impacted by the virus. And we've talked about that for over 30 days that this was gonna happen. Um, are there, can you confirm if there were 12 more previously unknown nursing home deaths? I think it would be nine from Saturday and three from Sunday. Yeah, I believe New York State updated their website related to that. Um, and again, we don't know when these individuals uh, passed away. Uh, we don't know, they don't share with us if it was uh, just because you have COVID doesn't mean that's what necessarily you died from. We, so we don't know enough about that, so we uh, aren't in a real position to comment on all of that outside of what we confirm the numbers that we see on New York State's DOH website that you see. At the governor's briefing today, there was some lack of clarity on religious organizations and where they fit. I believe they, they concluded that full-on services would count in phase four. You've said that church groups have gathered in smaller groups, but is there any in-between um, you know, if, if people want to have services of 20, could that fit in a sooner phase as long as they're proving to the control group we have the proper uh, social distancing and masks in place? Yeah, I think we're asking the state to look at and look at some common sense ways to phase into uh, situations where there's more density. And in our plan that we were working on with the state, we kind of addressed that to a degree. Uh, maybe you don't go, tens of the world now, right? You can be... Uh, in a public gathering uh, or at, in a backyard barbecue, 10 individuals stay with six feet apart or else you have to wear a mask. Uh, is there a way, so at church right now, you can have 10 people. So is there a way to go to 25 in phase two or 50 in phase three? And then in phase four, go back to your uh, larger services when everything else is open. I think those are fair requests and those are conversations that are being had now. Those are state decisions? It's a state decision. But we're, we're pressing them on this. It's, that's, that's common sense type things. Phase one, too early, because we're learning about the virus right now. Uh, we're dealing with it. But phase two, you, know, you need to test the virus at different points. So maybe you, you allow a little, for religious services, you, allow, you move it up uh, with each phase. Uh, that's something that I think I would be comfortable with. Have you made any decisions about the beaches and Memorial Day? Yeah, I think we're, we're leaning towards opening up Oneida Lake Shores uh, for Memorial Day weekend. I know I had some people who uh, like to go to Jamesville. We won't be ready for Memorial Day weekend at uh, Jamesville. Uh, I'll confirm later this week if we'll be ready for Oneida uh, Lake Shores. Uh, certainly, uh, you need to get your lifeguards ready. We got some work to do as far as uh, physical distancing, uh, layouts. And so we're working through that, but I, I, we're getting a little bit closer to maybe giving the green light to that. Ryan, do you have a number of tests the mobile unit did Thursday and Friday? I believe that number is, you talking about the one over on, uh, on our WIC office? Yep. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's over 300, between 300 and 400. Wait, would you guys consider doing it again? Yeah, so what we're gonna do with the mobile unit is we're going to continue to go into uh, communities uh, strategically. So I know that we're gonna be testing. Uh, I don't know enough about what's going on in the southern towns. There's a two, two, two. Uh, I don't know if that's really the case or not. So we're gonna go down and we're gonna test. Uh, I know there's other pockets of the community as we see trends, we're gonna go test. Uh, 
Um, and so we'll use the mobile site as a way to go into those neighborhoods directly, but also uh, anybody can get tested at the Syracuse Community Health Center. Um, and maybe you're the mayor can comment on this. Um, the Syracuse Nationals, um, assuming that we'll continue the way that we're going with the two week period between each phases, um, assuming that the Syracuse National will be included in phase four, uh, that's about the first week of July. And the, the Nationals are scheduled for the 17th. Um, thoughts, are you still on board for it? What's kind of your stance on that? Yeah, I love the Nationals. Uh, I, know the, I know the mayor does too. He'll talk about how much he loves them in a minute. But the, uh, I, the, the, it's the state's real estate, so it's going to be their call. Uh, I know the governor got asked about that when he was in town last week. So it, it, it's a tough, what, it really comes down to what, what timeline, how can the Nationals, when do the Nationals really need to have a final answer to be able to put it on? because you learn more every day, and certainly when you're making those decisions a week to two weeks is, seems like a year uh, of, of information as you learn. So um, the state's got an interesting call. Mayor, do you want to add to that at all? Okay. Yeah. He, uh, he loves the Nationals. Do you have any um, concerns hoping that it's still set in place um, in the county of just the, the large gathering of people that come to that? You know, you, you we were always cautious about things. How the virus got here was through uh, travel, right? We had cases in Colorado, we had cases in uh, New York City. Uh, but if we're, even, if we're even in a position where we're having this conversation that this might be able to happen in two, three weeks, I think we've seen a turning point then um, with the virus uh, because there, to your point, there's more risk. You get people coming in from all over the Northeast. Uh, so if we're even, if this thing's still even being contemplated in two to three weeks, I think we're seeing really strong data. Um, so I, I'm always hopeful. I hate seeing things canceled uh, more than two weeks out if you, if you don't have to do it, just because I know how much can change in that period of time. Do you have any clarity on pet grooming services? There seems to be confusion if they're essential or not. Yeah, so if pet grooming, and again, this is, uh, we get a lot of these questions. So if, if the pet grooming is related to uh, preventative health-related maintenance of, of the animal, it's allowed. Uh, I believe if it's for more of the same uh, situation with what our haircuts and salons would generally do, it's not allowed. So I, I hope I have clarified an already confusing regulation. But if you're, for whatever reason, if your, your dog has, a, or, or, or your cat or any animal has a, has a skin condition, they, the ticks are becoming an issue, worried about getting ticks or whatnot, so they need to get groomed, so the coat isn't as thick. Uh, I believe that is allowed at this point. You've faced a lot of Amazon questions in the last six months, and you haven't slipped once. How excited are you to finally use those words publicly, and how hard has it been to keep that name a secret? I, I reminded myself every time going into where I thought I would get that uh, trammel crow, trammel crow, trammel crow is uh, what we would do. Uh, it's, it feels a little bit weird saying the word Amazon, uh, but it, it's, it's good. It's cool. Um, you know, th that we're here, this deal happened. Uh, there's, you know, everybody here has seen or worked on big deals. Uh, and a lot of times our communities come in second place or third place in a big deal. And that's validating because you are in the mix, but unless you come in first place with these, you don't ever reap the rewards. So it's nice coming in first place. When you saw 1,000 Jobs partnered with this project, where did your mind go about a thousand jobs being added to this economy? Yeah, well, at the beginning. Remember when we had the, when we started this, we were looking at a economy with 3.7 percent unemployment, uh, and so you're you're talking about uh, what what these jobs meant in that situation was potential population growth. Uh, so I think there's still a level of that opportunity, but uh, right now this is again we've always said direct pathway out of poverty. Uh, a lot of people in the beginning of this process criticized $15 an hour jobs with benefits. And guess what? If you don't want to work when you don't have to, this is America. That's the beauty of this. Uh, but a lot of people uh, 
fifteen dollars an hour with benefits and that's not all the jobs there that's a lot of them but there's many many hundreds of other high paying jobs with this that's a direct pathway out of poverty and if you have two people working that uh, you're essentially getting your household uh, to over the household median income so it's uh, really really important and it's important that you have diversified uh, employment opportunities for diversified skill sets uh, so uh, this was a really really big win to do that and uh, you know right now the timing is really important a thousand I don't know what a thousand people does we'll have Rob get us some data but a thousand jobs into uh, into it, what it does to your unemployment rate in your own county uh, right now it, it will it will move the number for sure can you specify where construction stands as the foundation in? I've seen it, but I don't really know what. Yeah, I think it they is. did some site work clearing, and now they, uh, now that they got the uh, the plans, had to get redesigned with the new fire permit to meet those uh, guidelines. So now I think you're going to start seeing a lot of uh, foundation uh, type work starting up very soon. Ryan, with the regional team, um, other than the seven matrix that you're working to keep on top of. What's the next immediate goals for the regional council um, as you look forward ahead this week? So uh, within our regional group, and I'll, I'll let the mayor talk too, if uh, has some things to offer as well. I think right now, now that we're into phase one, it's communicating, uh, continue to communicate uh, for the businesses to uh, attest, continue to communicate related to where there's testing available uh, so that that's uh, there. Uh, related to tracers, we've already covered all that. We're good. Uh, and so it, it's that. It's dealing with, it's kind of like a clearinghouse where questions can be asked and answered. Or uh, the hospitalization issue, for example, I brought this up. We hear from our hospitals. I can't, there's confusion. If we can send these residents who back home, they need to go back home. They're not sick anymore. They got to go back home. But I can't test them because I know they'll test positive still. So what do I, it's hurting my hospital numbers. It's, I don't need them here. Uh, so these types of issues come up. We work them through the control room, uh, and then they, uh, you know, they go to their, their uh, contacts for some answers. Mayor, you want to add on that? I've said from the beginning, there's no instruction manual for what we're dealing with here. And so it, inevitably, um, the process is going to change. And, um, the state has acknowledged when they've had to shift uh, certain policies. Um, we've certainly had to, to do that locally. And uh, throughout the process, we, on a local level, provide that information and that insight, that local insight, to our state partners. Uh, it, when you look at the process as it exists today, I think uh, it, it's clear to me that a lot of the work that was done on a regional level before the regional control room was established uh, informed the overall statewide strategy. So this really, the, the control room formalizes that process uh, and again also gives us an ability to, um, to make decisions based on a common set of metrics and when appropriate adjust those metrics to account for you know, changes that, that we observe on the local level. Were there any decisions that came out of the council today? <sighs> Not that I can think of. I don't know if you... A yeah. um, lot of, lot of um, again, uh, questions that we get, uh, things that aren't, aren't clear um, uh, in, in the existing guidelines. And again, I've talked about, we've, we've talked about, I think, religious gatherings uh, every time. Um, the county executive talked about beaches. We're looking at our pools uh, and, and what we might do there. And you know, for, for us, there's, a, there's the health consideration, but there's also the financial consideration. Uh, but the, the state has... Uh, committed to getting back to us with with further guidance on on pools so um, it's it, more so just general updates to questions that we've raised earlier hey mayor while I have you up there sure. um, could you talk to the economic impact the Syracuse Nationals brings to to the city yeah to, like any other large uh, large tourist destination um, just because it's not specifically within the city of Syracuse boundaries doesn't mean it, it, it impacts us. I wouldn't be here talking about Amazon if, if we didn't uh, operate economically as a region. So uh, the Syracuse Nationals is a big driver uh, of, of people. Uh, it is noticeable when you walk the streets of downtown Syracuse when the Nationals are in town. You see a, see a lot more people, see a lot more fancy cars. Um, and, uh, and so absolutely, uh, you know, the, the um, benefits that... 
um, come from the nationals and other uh, drivers, state fair, absolutely have a positive impact on the city of Syracuse, and that's how we feel about Amazon as well. And Mayor, you, you invoked your role in the Amazon project, the city's role. Would you elaborate on what the Amazon project in a suburb can mean for the city of Syracuse and some of the, the people that live in the city? Well, the county executive talked about it being a, a pathway out, out of poverty, and we've spent a lot of time uh, trying to remove barriers to opportunity for people throughout the region, but we know that a lot of our poverty is concentrated in the city of Syracuse. So uh, we, from the first conversations we had about this project, we talked about how we could use it as a tool uh, to help bring people out of poverty. Uh, we're focused very much on transportation as an example and, and working with Centro to make sure that we can get people there. Uh, housing is uh, generally more affordable in the city of Syracuse, so we know that a lot of people that uh, may be attracted to the, uh, to the job uh, may see the city as the most viable place to live. So um, there are uh, absolute uh, opportunities for the, for the city and the people of the city of Syracuse to benefit, uh, but we're not just leaving that to chance. We're working uh, intentionally and proactively to, to ensure that that happens. Anything else? For the nursing homes, the people in the hospital can't go to the COVID floors of these nursing homes? Trish, you are. Were you eavesdropping on my conversation earlier with the control room, Trish? Uh, no, that's one of the suggestions we had is that uh, one of the things that we've worked very well with is developing these COVID units in uh, many of these buildings uh, that are prepared uh, to deal with uh, COVID positive folks. So again, this is evolving. You remember this order is probably four days old. Uh, and so that one of the things we can either do to Andrew's point about hospitalization numbers earlier about your seven out of seven, these individuals who are ready to go home, A, they want to go home. They should probably be able to go somewhere other than the hospital. So uh, if their buildings don't have COVID units, uh, then let's go and have these folks go into a COVID unit for a period of time or figure out guidance, uh, making sure they're meeting that 14-day guidance where they would count towards a recovery. Uh, or uh, if we're not going to change that, uh, which I think they will, um, then we we can't have that count in our data because these aren't people uh, that are uh, sick enough to go to the ICU to then uh, be at risk for mortality rates. So these are so that's uh, one of our suggestions was let's send these folks to pr properties for a period of time until they are deemed recovered. Uh, in that one of the options could be the uh, buildings with COVID units. And it's been more than two weeks since you started proactively testing some of these senior centers, but it looks like the number of active cases is not really plummeting in the way that you might think it would after two weeks. Do you know the, like, st like are these people still battling the illness or are they kind of on the mend? Yeah, I think, they're with, especially with our seniors, we're going to be conservative with when we deem them a recovery, make sure they're doing okay. Uh, we haven't seen it. the hospitalization rates over this period of time have been pretty stable. People coming in, people coming out. Um, the, uh, so I, I anticipate that active case number uh, to go down. But again, we're still getting new cases every day. So getting that many recoveries uh, in a day too. At some point, it's gonna, we'll, we'll see that really start moving quickly uh, if we're our positive cases stay in this range we're seeing now. But remember we had at one, a week ago, we had one day where we had almost 50 cases from a, a nursing home come in in one day. So we're, the earliest for those 50 people to come off would be two weeks from that day. That's the absolute earliest. And not everybody would uh, certainly meet that criteria. Anything else? As far as, um, I have a two part question. Um, I'll speak loud for you. Um, as far as accessibility, besides English, uh, sign language, or caption, if they're watching on TV or online, what other languages are your local uh, COVID-19 reported in, and uh, where are they being shared? Just because, like, it's a diverse area, you know? That's a good question. Uh, our te media team will get, get to you on that. Uh, certainly, uh, we have two different languages in sign mm -hmm. uh, every, at every session. I'm not sure... Uh, if our, how it works from, I, I'm getting 
the head nod that it is from, from the back of the room so that it does get put into different languages. But how many, <laughs> they will have to tell you, but okay. it, it is being translated into other languages. That's the answer. Okay. I, I only ask that because I know knowledge is power and you want to. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. The second portion of the question is uh, for those that cannot afford a newspaper, um, that don't have a radio, do not have cable or internet services, you know, for whatever reason. What is being done to reach those audiences with the updates? Because you share great info, but how can we reach those areas, the underserved? Yeah, so one of the, and that's a challenge, especially when you are in this type of pandemic. Mm. Uh, and that's something that uh, I think everybody will learn from uh, the technology piece of it. When our libraries were open, we had our tech packs that uh, we continue to invest in give, to help with the di digital divide. But we are doing, we have been doing a lot of proactive uh, information drop-offs uh, in, in various communities, uh, our new American communities, uh, some of our under, uh, traditionally underserved, underinvested communities as well with our health department. They do this outreach on issues year round. So this isn't new to them. Mm -hmm. This is just, we're not talking about STDs, we're talking about COVID-19. So uh, these are all things that are happening where there is information being dropped off at uh, various buildings uh, throughout the community. But our community wasn't, uh, the, some communities, the larger communities, there's a, there's a law, uh, half a million and above, qualify for direct aid. Uh, and uh, some of those communities have been able to do different things that we haven't been able to do. Uh, our, the state of New York got some aid that hasn't flowed to us yet that we could potentially do some things uh, with. Okay. Um, my last question is, uh, with Memorial Day coming up next week, Father's Day a few weeks later, followed by high school graduations, and then the 4th of July, and then, you know, um, nationals a few weeks after that, what are your plans as the regional or the region's team leader to guide the area counties to phase two, three, and four while also battling, you know, the warmer weather? These are events where people will gather. Are you changing anything, staying consistent? Yeah, I think we, we let the data drive our decision making. And I think that with our regional control rooms now, um, and again, the mayor touched on this, we've been working as leaders for about well over a month on all this. Now we've, we have a state outlet uh, and a direct tie into the second floor uh, in the Capitol building. Uh, but overall, we work with our other county leaders What they have an issue like test kits, for example. They're running low on test kits. We get them test kits. Uh, and it, related to working with uh, best practices, we're sharing our best practices. We have the infrastructure built up with uh, tracers, and more people in our health department. So we are sharing that information with these, uh, some of our smaller uh, county friends uh, and shared services are on the table for some of this, uh, working with them. So certainly uh, we talk every day. Uh, each county is unique uh, and has different uh, interest points that are directly related to their community. Uh, but we're gonna, everybody, this, broad, this goes live to people in every county around central New York and everybody's gotta be smart especially as we are interacting more with people uh, to protect themselves and their family. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Thank you, everyone.